Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus. Today we're picking right back up on Devin's Path. So, I decided to go back a bit because I found out that there is an interesting conversation you can have with Torolf if, uh, if you end up picking Devin, and I didn't want to skip that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase that for you guys, and we're just going to pick it up from there. But anyway, everyone, please sit back and enjoy. I'm going to for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? I think you guys quite enjoy these Double Dawn Chorus days. There's, there's quite a lot of content to get through. Anyway, <clears throat> let's jump right into it. Okay. All right. So we'll go with Torolf. Actually, since this is a... Uh, all right, we'll see right there. We'll come back and we'll see if you, you have a conversation with anyone else. Okay, so, all right. All right. I don't feel like going anywhere. I feel too lazy after the lectures. I sit down again and slump in my chair, closing my eyes and listening to the paw steps of students leaving the room. <coughs> Bless me, guys. <coughs> oh, goodness. Oh, I did not expect that. The brain, what an incredible complex structure. Somehow, inside these folds and vast networks, through electrical impulses, our consciousness arises. Ever since it first occurred to me, it never ceased to amaze me. The more I learn about it, the more complicated it turns out to be, and the answer to this riddle seems to be ever more elusive. Suddenly, the fur on my neck bristles. Am I being watched? <laughs> the room is mostly empty now, but turning around, I notice Torolf leaning against the wall and looking at me. Hey there. Um, hello. What are you doing here? Silly question. I was listening to a lecture. It's over now, though. Same as you, probably. I didn't feel like leaving the room. It's nice here. And then I noticed you here. What would you say for a short walk? Hmm. I had no plans for now, and I didn't have many occasions to talk with the tiger. Sounds good. Where to? I think I've seen the whole guest house already. I was thinking about a walk outside, actually. The outside still looks gloomy and uninviting, but this time my curiosity wins with my aversion to the cold. Sure, a quick one is fine. Just a moment, I'll go grab my jacket. Great! Meet you outside, then? Okay, be right back. Yep, and what an interesting conversation this turns out to be. Stepping outside, I get hit by the arctic wind. It's not as cold as I was afraid it would be, though, and my jacket shields me from it well. And honestly, the views are worth it. It's a beautiful spot, isn't it? Torolf is leaning against the wall and looking ahead. Yeah, the road might have been long, but I'm glad the university brought us here. I'm not really sure what to talk about with him, so I just reply what I think he might want to hear. He doesn't reply, but simply stares at the rocky mountaintops that seem so close from here, lost in thoughts. I hoped he had a reason to bring me here and would carry the conversation. Now I'm feeling a sort of responsibility to fill the silence. Is it much different from where you grew up? Oh man, no, not at all. It reminds me of home, actually. I spent my childhood on one of the islands not very far from here. Torf pushes himself from the wall and starts walking slowly through the terrace. I catch up to him and walk alongside, trying to figure out what he's, what he's up to. I moved to Anzlo when I first started studying and never looked back. Oh, your memories from here aren't the best? No, that's not it. They're mostly sweet, but what, what prospects are here, really? Hailing from a small town myself, I can understand him. Moving out for studies was something completely natural for me, an obvious fact of life. The thought of staying never appeared in my head. If I stayed there, what would I be doing now, I wonder? I picture my high school friends meeting in a local bar for a weekly board game session and me joining them. Maybe it wasn't such a bad place. I wondered if attending this camp was a good idea, but being back here, I don't feel anything towards this place. It doesn't define me in any way. I built my own future. And I am enjoying this camp quite a lot so far. Yeah, it's nice, even if things aren't going as planned. Oh, by the way, how did you like the lecture? Lecture? Oh yeah, it was fine. A tad technical, but after all, we're here to learn something. Mm-hmm, right. So, how was your evening yesterday? Found a room to stay in? Why do I feel like he's not exactly interested in studying? And if not, then what's he doing here? Trying to get some tail. Uh, I'm gonna confront him about it first. Torolf, can I ask you something? Shoot! Why are you here? Uh, 
I mean, in this university and on this trip. Well, I got bored of my job and after a break decided to learn about something more interesting. You told me that already, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> That's how it went, though. Maybe, but you don't seem to care about your studies at all. I mean, we're at a science camp. We finally started with lectures, and you're more interested in where I slept last night. Oh. Troll stays silent for a while. Looking into his eyes, I see some hesitation, as if he was debating whether or not it's worth the lie. Well, we need to do something with our lives, don't we? I don't know about you, but sitting in a chair and playing games all day isn't really an answer for me. Now there's wasting my life in a job that sucks the living soul out of me. Is this what life is supposed to be? But you're learning for a new profession, right? I was the happiest back when I was studying for the first time, and I hoped I could replicate that feeling now. So, did it work? <laughs> no. Trolf turns around and starts walking alongside the guest house, stuffing his paws into his pockets. Somehow, I don't think he wants me to follow him. The mountains loom in the distance, the only other witness of our conversation. Imagine young Trolf running down their slopes in summer, flying a kite. I know some facts about him, but when I start thinking about it, I don't know him at all. Was this the first glimpse into the real Torolf I got? Yeah, I think it was. He's just... Poor guy. I do feel for Torolf. I'm gonna go back. Okay, guys, we're gonna go back and we're gonna answer that other question real quick. Uh, there we go. Answer his question. Okay. Oh, yeah, thankfully. And? Where did you stay? Uh, there's no way around it, is there? If I avoid answering, he will only get more curious. I talked with Coach Devin, and he offered me a place in his room, so I went with that. With a coach? Damn. Do you have classes with him? Well, I do. Damn, Carvin. You keep surprising me. How about your evening? That's an awful save, but it's literally the only thing that came to my mind. Ha, huh, you're not getting away that easily. My evening was fine, though. I very much enjoyed it. I look over at the mountains, remembering everything that happened the previous day. Listen, I know you have your side set on someone else already. W what? No, that's not what it's... Shh. It's almost painfully obvious, and we both know it well. But if you ever want to meet for meet up for something, you know where to find me. Trolf turns around and walks back into the guest house, leaving me here, speechless. Hmm. Oh, what an interesting proposition. Finally over. Okay, so guys, we're gonna go back. I am an idiot. I saved over that choice that you get. So give us one second. We'll be right back there. Yada 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 yada. Okay, almost there. And bang, bingo. We are here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna that right there. That choice is gonna be right there. Okay. So let's hang out in the lobby with Lake and see what happens. After the lecture, I went to the lobby, hoping I could find someone to play table paw ball with me, but the place has been empty since I got here. Wait, waiting, I started walking around, first around the room in circles, and now my paws have led me here, to the glazed corridor between to the glazed corridor between the renovated lobby and the more recent part of the guest house. Carvin! Good thing you're here! Can you believe that Lake brought a VR headset with him and didn't tell us anything? Ooh, what was that? Oh, okay, this is just leading into the whole lake with the VR thing. Okay. Okay, so, alright guys, I'm going to pause it here, and when I pick back up, we will be at more of Coach's content, alright? Hello everyone, we are back! Alright, so I sped it up a bit, we are now back at back with Coach, right when, before the lights go off. I'm very excited, let's see what happens. Alright, let's resume. Oh. Okay, I paused like right when that, it was time for me to do an ad insert. Okay. I'd like to make him feel better somehow, but there's nothing I can say that could change what he went through. I want to tell him everything will be fine here and he can be himself, but it sounds stupid even in my head. It's almost silly how being born in the wrong place can ruin your life. I don't know about you, but this much heat is by, but this much heat is enough for me. I need to go cool down. Devin stands up and walks down the row of benches, panting. Oh! Huh? Did the lights go out? The stove is still burning bright, but the lamps are all dark. Huh. This wasn't planned. I better go check what's going on. Devin continues towards the sauna door, keeping his tail low. Are you going to? Oh, yeah! The panther leaves the sauna, and I walk out after him. Okay. Okay. We dry ourselves and then dress in silence. I can't tell if Devin is avoiding eye contact with me or just wants to get to the front desk as quickly as possible. 
Still, the tension between us is palpable and it worries me. Maybe he's feeling uneasy after dropping such a revelation on me, and I can't be sure how big of a thing it was for him. Could he regret opening up to me like that? I wouldn't want this to put a wedge between us. Maybe I should say something. Garvin? Devin's voice breaks the silence. It sounds firm and more formal than before. The sound dies quickly, sucked in by the silence again. Yes? It feels weird being here with no light. It's quiet all around, too, as if this place was desolate. Being here alone with Devin makes it even weirder. It feels like I'm walking on the moon. Devin still looks somewhere in the distance, like he's mulling over what to say. His eyes shine in the darkness like two amber pearls. I'm sorry for unpacking all this on you. It's okay, I understand. It must be hard to carry that baggage with you. You're the first person I uh, you're the first person I told that I told that here in Norway. And the second person here that knows it, Rune figured it out himself. I'd like this to not be a big deal for me, but it still is. Devin sighs and rubs his temple before continuing. There's another reason I mentioned it too. I told you this story because I know that we don't have it easy sometimes. We? I understand what you're going through, or at least I think I do. I know very well that it might be hard to control your urges when you don't have a safe space to explore your sexuality. Oh no. No, 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 no. Societal acceptance is one thing, but heteronormativity is something different and more subtle. So he saw me with his tank top back in his room. I glance at the door, but this is not a situation I couldn't wiggle my way out of. Hey, I understand. No, don't hold that against you. The subtle note of hesitance in his voice says otherwise. As I said, I know that it might be hard for you, and if you need someone to talk with, I'm here for you. But I have to ask you to not do that again. The ringing in my ear starts to drown out his voice. My throat feels dry and I can't get any words out out of myself. Ellie nod in response. I want you to promise me, Carvin. Devin's eyes shine in the darkness as his piercing gaze drills into my skull. I won't. I promise. I'm sorry, coach. There's no way we could have a normal friendship after something like that. Though, could we even ever have a normal friendship? Hey, no need to get all formal with me now. It's water under the bridge. Let's forget about it, okay? That would be for the best, but I don't think either of us could do that. What the hell was I thinking? I mean it, Carvin. It would be easier for you if it would be easier for you to pretend it never happened. You can pretend yes, but it won't mean it didn't happen. So how about we leave this behind and go check why the lights are out? My guess is that Coach doesn't want to have a relationship with a student. But what the fuck is he doing with Rune is my question. Hmm. It's obvious from his tone that this conversation was as uncomfortable for him as it was for me. I'm as happy about the change of topic as he is, too. I nod and leave the room with Devin. I'd hoped that the light would come back quickly, but it's been, what, five minutes now at least? It might be something more serious. You'd think they have power generators in a guest house like this, but maybe power outages are so rare here they don't need them. Or maybe they just didn't turn them on. Where is everyone? It's dark all around. Only emergency exits shine with their greenish glow as if they were floating on the void. Likely in their rooms or in the cafeteria. In case of an emergency, one of the professors should be should have gathered everyone from the corridors there. Or something awful happened and we're really alone here. I'd expect to see some of the professors with torches here, though. This is not school anymore. Everyone here is an adult. They'll be fine. A movement inside the corridor ahead of us catches my eye. It's dark enough that I can barely see the shadowy silhouette lurking in the darkness. Oh! What the fuck? It's Rune. It's Rune! <laughs> Hello? Is anyone there? I try to make out its shape in the darkness, but something doesn't seem right with it. It has... Two heads? <laughs> <laughs> it's Rune and Lake. <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. The light comes back, and before us, in the middle of the corridor, stands Lake with Rune hiding behind him. Lake, uh, Rune, you're crushing my sides. It's you. <laughs> the light is back. Rune, Lake, what were you two doing out there? We just went out to see what's happening. Why are you walking without a flashlight, though? Well, I don't have one. You don't have one in your phone? Oh. 
I thought it would be more fun without any light. What? You remembered and you didn't tell me? Is everything okay? You had, you had to be pretty out there to not think about using your phone. I'm all fine now, thanks. I just don't like these kinds of situations. Anyway, it's good that the power is back, but I should go and check out what happened. Before I can react, Devin marches away in the direction of the lobby. My first impulse is to follow him, but then I think that he might not want me to. <clears throat> huh. Something wrong with him? Rune, you think we could gather everyone back and continue playing? I don't know if I want to. What were you playing? Never have I ever. Ooh, Carvin, you have to join us too! We went to the common room soon after you left. I dropped you a message, but you never replied. It had to be when I was on my walk or already in the locker room. I haven't checked my phone since dinner. Maybe I should do that more often, at least on this trip. Sorry, I never saw it. I think I need a breather from all this. Some light-hearted fun should do me good after the whole day of emotional roller coaster. Maybe they have some alcohol. That could help me forget stuff I don't want to remember. But that, sound that sounds good. I'll gladly go. How about you, Rune? I really need to go. Sorry. Besides, these games were even more stressful than the project I'm working on, so I'd rather pass. Like, what did you do to him? Uh, nothing. Maybe just some playful teasing. I apologized already. Yes, but the damage was already done. See you later. See ya. See ya. So, it's just the two of us. Let's go then, before it's supper time. Mm -hmm. Better not be. Okay, there's still more. Okay, perfect. I step into the cafeteria with unsteady gait. The alcohol is still coursing through my veins. Walking towards the table with food, I almost stumble into some other student who's walking to a table with a plate. God damn it, Lake, it's the last time I play any drinking game with this lion. I swear he was deliberately coming up with things to make me drink. I didn't even suspect he knew this much about me. Good thing I'm not drunk yet. Just a bit uncoordinated. I grab a plate too and sit at an empty table not far from the entrance. I'm not really even hungry, but I know I should eat something before the end of the day, or I'll wake up completely drained tomorrow. There's an unpleasant knot in the pit of my stomach, though, and even though the food looks nice, I don't really have any appetite. I stare for a moment at the slice of fruit tart before pushing the plate away from me and leaning back on the chair. Never have I ever had a crush on my teacher. Does Lake know? What, what, why would he think of that if he didn't? Really? Do I really have a crush on him? I really have a crush on him, don't I? I feel like banging my head on the table. Why, Carvin? Why would you get a crush on someone ten years older than you? Your coach on top of that. Maybe that's just the way I am. My previous crush was my age, but that was long ago, and it was my first high school love. I don't think that counts. Oh no, now it all makes sense. I'm out of guys that are older than me. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> now that I think of it, I even usually look at porn with guys who look like they're in their 30s. There's so much about myself I don't know yet. Yeah, you want a daddy, don't you? <laughs> I can't help it. That's what he wants. He wants that, uh, ooh, he wants some of that older guy loving. Why aren't you eating? I look over from the plate and see Rune standing at the other side of the table, his brows furrowed in a look of concern. I just got lost in my thoughts. I didn't notice him approaching at all. Maybe I'm a bit more drunk than I thought. I pull the plate closer and cut myself a piece of the tart with a spoon. Quick sustenance before heading back to the party. Oh no, I'm done playing. It got a bit too personal. Yeah, I get that. I had enough after a few rounds, too. Can I sit here? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. By the way, how's befriending Devin going? I almost spit out the piece of tart I'm chewing on. I take it's going well, considering you were coming back from the swimming pool together. Uh, sauna, actually. And it's going pretty good, I guess. Sauna, really? I talked to him into going once, and he didn't really like it. Said he didn't feel too comfortable being there. Oh, one second. Who's messaging me? I don't care. <laughs> That's good. I'm happy he's opening up. Ruin leans in and lowers his voice, getting all serious all of a sudden. Oh. Ooh. But if you hurt this man, I'm going to have to kill you. Be good to him. He deserves some kindness. His eyes seem cold as steel. Chill. How could I hurt him? Just saying. I don't think you will. I'm joking, of course. Please, have that in mind. Anyway, I had better be going. Got something planned for the evening. I glance at Rune's plate. It's already empty while I still barely touched mine. Wow, he must be really in a hurry. Still working on that project? 
No, that's done. Took me some time, but I got what I need for now. Right. I don't think he'd be this happy to go work on a project for the university. See you tomorrow, then? Good night. <laughs> I deflate in my seat, exhaling and rub my temples. While we were talking, the cafeteria emptied almost entirely. Maybe it wasn't such a brief conversation. Alcohol distorts the flow of time quite significantly, after all. Mindlessly, I take a, I take a few more bites of the food while looking out the window into the darkness that covers the mountains. Then I notice my own reflection staring at me, like another version of me observing me closely. I wish I was sober. Someone enters the cafeteria and I glance in their direction. It's Devin. My heart hammers into my chest as I tense up in my chair. Devin went away so fast after the sauna that I can't be sure if everything is alright between us. And before I realize what I'm doing, I lean forward and wave to him. He notices me right away and raises his paw before continuing to the table with the food. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Ooh, maybe we get some Devin loving next episode. Ooh, ooh, what, can I, what is this? <laughs> I can't help it, I'm thirsty! Oh, God. Good thing I got some coffee here. That'll that'll work for now. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next episode. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!